So for today's uh, tutorial, I'm going to explain to you the basics of journaling and accounting. So um, I know in the previous tutorial, I explained the asset and the liability. And the asset is what you owe, and liability is what you owe. There's also a third accounting accounting, and it's called owner's equity. And owner's equity is basically what you own subtracted by what you owe. It's basically your net worth, the company's net worth. And the thing about owner's equity is that it only changes when there's a gain in assets without a gain in liabilities or where there's a gain in the liabilities without a gain in assets or some other situations. And that I'll explain in a different tutorial. So in this tutorial, I just I want to ignore owner's equity just because assets are on the credit side, liabilities on the credit side, and owner's equity is on the credit side because of the system. And it's just there to make it logical. And because it's confusing at first, I'm just going to ignore it. So now I'm just going to look at transaction between assets and liabilities. And in these journal examples, I'm just going to assume that owner's equity is, will remain constant. Um, here is an example of a journal entry, a standard journal entry. You can see the date. It's 2013. It's dated for February the 18th. And in this uh, journal entry, two accounts are being modified, the supplies account and the bank account. The supplies account is being debited by $100 and the bank account is being credited by $100. Uh, if you notice, the, the, all the credit accounts that are being credited are always indented, just like the bank is indented and the supplies is not. And it's just, the purpose of this is to make it look nice. And it's just because since the credit is to the right of the debit, it would make sense. That's what DR and CR to, um, indent the bank so that you know that it's a credit transaction, not a debit transaction. The third, second thing of that journal is that the debit transactions always come before the credit transactions, which means that it's always important to put a description in italics so people know what exactly the purchase is. It's not obvious just by looking at the journal itself. Also notice that the debit and the credit are balanced. Every journal entry should have a balanced debit and credit rate. So there are three ways to modify accounts without changing owner's equity. The first one is to keep assets, the asset account constant, but to change the values inside of the asset account. The second option is to keep liabilities, the total liabilities account constant, but to change the values inside the liabilities account. And finally, the third way to keep owner's equity constant, but to change accounts, is to change your assets and liabilities by a constant value. In all three of these options, owner's equity will remain constant. So, just to clarify, the concept is that assets is not just one account. Total liabilities is not just one account. A total assets has a bank account in it, a supplies account in it, it may have like an automobile account in it, it may have a cash account. These are all different accounts that add up to create the total assets account. Just as with the total liabilities account, there have, there's a bank loan, there's accounts payable. These are all separate accounts that add up to create the total liability. So now I'm going to explain what it means to keep the assets account constant. So basically, in this situation, when one account in the assets is increased or debited, Another is decreased by the same amount or its credit. So imagine that I have a company here with a bank asset and a supplies asset. Uh, originally, the, the, the company has $300 in its bank account and $0 in its supplies. It spends $300 or a credit of $300 in bank, which would make it $0. And there's a debit or an increase of $300 in the supplies account, which would create a supplies account with $300. Notice that the total assets is still 300 and thus the asset, total asset value still remains constant. So in this situation, you spend money to gain and in this scenario occurs when you spend something to get an equal amount in return. So in the bank, $300 of assets were spent, however, 300 worth of supplies assets are gained. Now the thing is that the assumption is that because total assets is looked at as a final cash value, the assumption is that supplies can be sold back to bank. So, so the assumption is that I could 
uh, debit, I could credit my supplies account with $300 and, and debit my bank account with $300. In the end, my total assets will still be $300. And to explain this a bit better, I have to look at the continuing concern concept, which is one of the generally accepted accounting pr principles. And the, basically it states that all assets will be used for their intended person and priced at their original value, and that assets do not lose their value, which means that that um, because assets are looked at at them at their monetary value, the assumption is that the supplies asset account can be sold back to the bank account. Total assets is the amount of money a company would have if all their assets were sold. So the assumption is that the asset the total assets remains at a value of three hundred because the supplies account is priced at its original value, which means that it can be sold to the bank. For its original value, and that is how assets remain constant. Uh, here's a journal example. Here, the supplies is, deb is debited by hundred dollars, which means it goes up, and the bank is credited by hundred dollars, which means that goes down. Uh, the asset remains asset total assets remain the same because hundred plus negative hundred, negative hundred being a credit rate, is equal to zero. So assets don't change. And furthermore, debit and credit are balanced in this situation, which every journal should be balanced. In, in these examples, it's because owner's equity isn't being changed, but in future examples, uh, owner's equity will be modified so that the journal will stay balanced. Same on the liabilities, and it's also to keep that constant. And basically, this is when one account in the liabilities is increased or is credited, another is decreased by the same or debited. So imagine looking at these two liability accounts. You have a bank loan and you have an accounts payable to John Smith. Again, accounts payable is basically you owe money to a certain person. So a bank loan of zero dollars and accounts payable of three hundred dollars would uh, be a total liability of three hundred dollars. If I were to increase or credit my bank loan by three hundred dollars, I could debit my uh, accounts payable by three hundred dollars, and in the end. The combined liabilities will still be three hundred dollars. So uh, I debit and credit by the same amount. So liabilities still remain the same. And in this situation, uh, the company borrowed three hundred dollars from the bank to pay off a loan to John Smith. And this they might do it because the accounts payable may be required to be paid off earlier, maybe a day earlier, and the bank loan maybe would be paid off in a month. So it would make sense to. Uh, uh, credit a bank loan and debit an accounts payable. In the end, combined liabilities is still the same, or it's actually doesn't change, and in this situation, the journal will be balanced. So in this example, this would be what it would look like in a journal. You have the date, February 18th. In this situation, accounts payable is the account that's being debited, so it is the account that is shown first, and it has a debit rating of $300. Uh, the bank loan is the is the loan that you're borrowing money from. That's the credit rating. So there would be a credit rating of three hundred dollars. Um, negative three hundred uh, on the credit plus three hundred on the debt is equal to zero dollars, which means no change in owner's equity. Furthermore, in this journal, debit equals credit. Three hundred equals three hundred. So the journal is balanced. Finally, there's the final way of modifying assets and liability accounts without changing owner's equity. And this is by modifying them with a constant value. So imagine if x were this constant value. The equation which is assets minus liabilities is equal to owner's equity would be assets plus the constant value minus the minus uh, liabilities plus the constant value is equal to owner's equity. And that simplifies a plus x minus l minus x equals owner's equity. Uh, then it's a minus l plus x minus f equals owner's equity. Basically, the positive x and the negative x cancel out. So in the end, you basically get the same equation, which is a minus l is equal to owner's equity. This is proof that modifying both accounts by a constant value of x will still keep owner's equity constant. Also, if you look at it as x were negative, you could see a minus x minus l minus x equals owner's equity, which would be a minus x minus l plus x equals owner's equity which is equal to a minus l minus x plus x equity. Again, the x's cancel out, and you get a minus l equals owner's equity. So the equation remains constant, and so editing assets and liabilities negatively by the same value will not affect owner's equity. 
So in this example, I have two examples. The first one is when debit goes up and credit goes up, and my second one is when debit goes down and credit goes down. So basically, in my first example, how it works is that when you borrow $100 from the bank, which is a liability and credit, you also gain $100 in cash. So both accounts go up equally, and thus owner's equity remains the same. If you add 100 to your uh, debit account, which is a bank, and then you add 100 to your credit account, which is a liability, uh, they're both equal. So $100 of debit minus, sorry, plus $100 of credit, which is uh, negative $100 of debit, that's the owner's equity is equal to zero, which is the same as zero, which is the same as the top part, which says zero is subtracted by zero. So, the, and then the second way is decreasing. So if I had $200 in the bank account and I had a $200 liability to the bank and I were to pay off this loan by $200, I would lose $200 from my bank account, but my loan to the bank would also decrease by $200. So in this situation, I'm crediting my bank asset by $200 and debiting my liability asset by $200. In the end, owners actually remains the same. 200 minus 200 is equal to zero, and zero minus zero is equal to zero. Notice that the 200 and the zero on the liabilities then are technically negative because they are credit values. And in the end, owner's equity is equal. And here I have two journal examples. In the first one, bank is debited or increased by $100, and the bank loan is credited or increased by $100. Again, 100 plus negative 100 is zero. In my second example, the bank loan is debited by $200, it's decreased by $200, and the bank asset is credited or decreased by $200. Again, debit of 200 plus credit of 200 is equal to 200 plus negative 200, which is equal to zero dollars. So in both aspects, um, owner's equity does not change. And if you notice in the journal, um, they're bound. Even if you add the two up, they're still bound. So 100 plus 200 is still equal to 100 plus 200. And in your journal, for if you add all the debits up and all the credits up, those two should always balance. If they don't balance, that means that there's something wrong with one of your transactions. And uh, there are occasions, I just look into the next tutorial or so, there are certain occasions where owner's equity will be required to be changed and that um, just modifying assets and liabilities won't create a balanced journal or a balanced balance sheet or you know any kind of report that would an accountant would need to make. So here are a couple of questions. What if my assets sell for less than the purchase value? If I the assumption was that my asset could be sold back into cash for the same value. So once I can't sell it for the same value, I'm I'm, I'm spending money and I'm not gaining something in return that's of equal value. Furthermore, once if someone gives money to the bank, there's an increase in assets, but there's no increase in liabilities. What if someone takes money from the bank? There's an increase in liabilities, or sorry, a decrease in assets without a change in liabilities. Once if I used up one of my assets, once I have an asset that was worth $300, but I used it up and now it's gone. So that's another. And then once if my loans increased due to interest, that would be my liabilities going up without my assets going up. And all of these questions can be answered by doing a change in owner's equity, which is the, the, the last account of accounting. And uh, that would balance out the equation, but that I'll explain that too. Well, thank you for listening.